this video, I'm going to do something maybe slightly unfair. I'm going to make the assertion that you believe the following two things. So number one, it's really bad that extreme poverty exists. Uh, and it's really unfair that some people have to have a really difficult life, basically by no fault of their own. And number two, if there was something that we could do about that to eliminate extreme poverty that didn't really cost us anything, we should definitely do it. So these are two beliefs I'm assuming you have. What do they mean? Well, I'm going to argue that they mean you should take the giving what we can pledge. So Giving What We Can is an organization which looks to identify and raise funds for the most effective charities working in the developing world. The Giving What We Can pledge is a pledge to give 10% of your career income to those organizations which you believe are doing the most good. Okay, that's all well and good, but what does that have to do with the two claims I made earlier? Well, it turns out that those of us living in the developed world can do an awful lot for people living in extreme poverty. For example, we can buy insecticide-treated bed nets through organizations like the Against Malaria Foundation. AMF can buy a bed net for just about $3, and they're so effective at preventing malaria that for every $3,500 US dollars we spend on nets, we can save a life that otherwise would have been lost to malaria. Well, that's all well and good, you might say, but remember in point two you said it wouldn't cost us anything real or significant. Surely 10% of your income is real and significant. Yeah, that's totally fair. But interestingly, I actually think that giving away 10% of your income isn't a real burden for most of us living in the developed world. But don't take my word for it. Andreas Morgensen does a really good job in this video of outlining a lot of the data from social psychology which suggests that giving away 10% of your income might actually make you happier. But of course, Andreas's research is based on averages, and so it might be that you watching this video are in a very financially difficult situation and couldn't afford to give 10%. I can see that's a possibility, but chances are most people watching this video could give away 10% and be basically just as happy, to be basically no real sacrifice in terms of their own life satisfaction. And while giving away 10% doesn't really have an impact on our self-reported well-being, it can have an incredibly profound impact on other people. As we saw earlier, if this money is used wisely, it can literally save people's lives. And that's amazing. Okay, so maybe you're convinced by Andreas' research that giving away 10% wouldn't be a real sacrifice, and you're excited by the idea that you could save dozens of people's lives from malaria. But you also might be worried that extreme poverty won't really be solved by these measures. You might be worried that the little impact that you'll have through AMF or SCI or other of our recommended charities will just be gobbled up by the bigger problems that face the developing world. And I think part of this concern is reasonable. Indeed, I think the reason people don't give more already is because they're worried that their money's not going to have a real impact. And while there are features of this concern that are important, the upshot of it surely can't be that we do nothing. First of all, it should be known that even if your donations don't solve all of the problems that cause extreme poverty, you're still going to be literally saving people's lives. And that's really important because people's lives are important. It makes a really big difference to not lose a sibling or a loved one to a terrible disease, or to prevent someone from getting a disease that they'd otherwise have. Those are really big impacts even if we don't solve the big higher level issues. Furthermore, big system change can happen if enough people like you decide to take the pledge. For example, if 10% of people in the developed world decided to take the pledge, we would over triple the amount of money that's being spent on aid. And because these donors would be selecting for the most effective interventions, we would no doubt have an absolutely incredible impact with that amount of money. Furthermore, some of the organizations that we recommend already work to help make system changes within governments. For example, Project Healthy Children works with local governments in order to implement micronutrient fortification food policy, which has a really profound effect. So I think in a way, giving what we can represents a kind of systematic change both by generating a bunch of money for really effective interventions and by potentially working with both developing and developed governments to help fix some of the systems that are broken. So if these ideas excite you, if you like the idea of being able to save dozens and dozens of people's lives throughout your career, of being part of a movement that takes the problem of extreme poverty really seriously and takes big steps to attack it, then I encourage you to take the Giving What We Can pledge. Or at the very least, to check out our website. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you next time.